Okay, welcome back everybody. Last time we had just finished discussing the Hungarian Revolution. Um, we're going to turn our gaze uh, briefly to uh, domestic politics in the middle of the 1950s before uh, uh, plunging back into foreign affairs. Um, so Eisenhower was um, responsible for the creation of the largest public works project in American history uh, with the Interstate Highway Act. Now it's um, an easy trap to fall into to uh, associate and oversimplify public works with democratic administrations because of the New Deal. Um, and uh, generally that was the trend, but there were uh, significant public works projects under Republican administrations as well. If you think of uh, the construction of Boulder Dam uh, under the Hoover administration, which was a, a Republican administration, and um, the creation of the largest um, public works project in American history, the construction of the interstate highway system, which involved uh, the creation of 41,000 miles of expressways that crisscross the United States. Um, so we have one here in Fort Myers, or just outside of Fort Myers, I-75. I and if you drive out to the interstate, you'll see, uh, you should see a sign that says um, the Eisenhower uh, interstate system uh, affording credit to Eisenhower for um, the initiative to build these uh, amazing roads, really a wonder of the world. Uh, you can drive on I-75 and not run into a traffic light or a stop sign from here to Canada. It's a pretty remarkable thing. Uh, and think about how, um, how much uh, work goes into the construction of just one mile of interstate, let alone 41,000 miles of interstate. Uh, all the land that needs to be cleared um, and um, the land that needs to be uh, flattened, uh, the, uh, all the bridges uh, across waterways and overpassing roads, it, it really is a phenomenal. Uh, a phenomenal network of, 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 of roads and arteries of trade. But it also had a large uh, impact on the environment. Uh, it made it difficult for animals to migrate from one part of the forest to another or one part of the fields to another. It created an impediment um, for uh, the migration of, of animals. Uh, but it also provided a, a great deal of opportunity for businesses. Uh, think about all the, uh, all the fast food restaurants along the interstate, all the hotels, all the, the, the gas stations and convenience stores. Uh, really, um, it had a huge, not just an environmental impact, but uh, also a, a massive economic impact. Now, there was a strategic reason for it. Uh, for the creation of the interstate highway system. Uh, the, the, the system allowed for the possible evacuation of cities much more rapidly uh, than um, what could have been accomplished before the construction of the interstate system. And there's a, an urban legend that is, says that they built the interstate so that makeshift airstrips could be created in case the United States were was ever um, invaded by a foreign power. But that's not entirely true. Um, most segments of the interstate are too short uh, before there's an impediment to land an airplane. Um, most um, there, there's either a bridge or some other kind of impediment almost every mile along the interstate. So you can't really you can't really land a plane on it. Um, it's um, it, it, it was not intended originally uh, to create makeshift airstrips if, if there was need. So that's, that's a myth. That's an urban legend. That's not entirely true. All right, so let's turn our attention back to um, foreign affairs. Uh, let's look at Egypt. Um, Egypt uh, had been a protectorate in the British Empire in the first part of the 20th century, but after World War II, Britain could no longer afford to administer its empire. So um, 
uh, a, a, a colonel by the name of Abdul Gamal Abdul Nasser um, uh, emerged as Egypt's leader and uh, he wanted to modernize his country and he thought a good way of doing that um, would be to build a hydroelectric dam at Aswan, which is in the southern part of the country. And that dam would then generate electricity, which would provide hydroelectric power for the Nile River Valley. Nasser began seeking funds uh, from the United States, but also from the Soviet Union to help him with this project. And initially, the United States was fine. Okay, we'll provide uh, funds to help you do this. Um, but the Secretary of State at the time, John Foster Dulles, was a staunch anti-communist. And when he learned that Nasser was also receiving funds from the Soviet Union, um, he said, that's it. The United States will no longer uh, provide funds to help someone who's also seeking funds from a communist country. And so Nasser needed to seek other sources of revenue. And uh, he recognized that the Suez Canal was extremely profitable. Uh, it generated a lot of money in tolls, uh, but it was owned by British and French shareholders. So he said that really is a resource that should benefit the Egyptian people. So he seized control of the canal and began collecting the tolls from the canal to fund the dam at Aswan. Well, this was unacceptable to British and French shareholders who had invested in um, the Suez Canal Company and thought that the tolls that it was generate, generating were rightfully theirs. So Britain and France, with the help of Israel, responded by invading Egypt this enraged the Arab world. Um, and what we see uh, in, the, in, in the months following the initial invasion is the Arab world drifting into ever further into the Soviet sphere of influence. Well, that was a real problem for the United States because um, the United States had become dependent on Middle Eastern oil to fund its economic growth. Um, and the fact that Soviet influence over those oil producing countries was increasing uh, was very alarming. That prompted Eisenhower essentially to tell the British and the French, get the hell out of Egypt. And the British and the French had no choice to do so because they were so dependent on trade with the United States and the United States threatened to cut off aspects of trade with the British and the French. So in a very humiliating development, uh, the British and the French had to withdraw from Egypt essentially with their, their tails between their, their legs. Um, the Suez create crisis uh, essentially motivated Eisenhower to formulate the Eisenhower Doctrine in which under which it became U.S. policy that the U.S. would not accept any uh, communist takeover of any Middle Eastern country. And that was uh, a real manifestation of America's dependence on foreign oil. In 1960, countries in the Middle East and uh, Venezuela created the organization of um, petroleum exporting country, uh, OPEC for short, which would eventually affect the United States and the West economically in pretty significant ways. And we'll certainly talk about that in greater detail later in the semester. That brings us to the election of 1956, which was simply a rematch of 1952 with the same outcome. The Democrats nominated Adlai Stevenson, the Republicans nominated Dwight Eisenhower, and again Eisenhower won because he was 
a popular president, and still a war hero. The space race got underway uh, in Eisenhower's second term. Uh, the Russians managed to lob a basketball-sized satellite into orbit in 1957. Uh, Sputnik, which didn't really do anything, it just orbited the Earth and beeped periodically. But it really alarmed Americans because they concluded that if the Soviets were um, capable of launching a satellite into space, they weren't far off from being able to launch an intercontinental ballistic missile, which could take off from the Soviet Union and deliver a nuclear warhead over an American city in a matter of minutes. And that um, prompted the Eisenhower administration to push for a National Defense Education Act, which provided uh, dramatic increases in funds for math and science programs for uh, American students so that America would develop top flight engineers uh, who would keep up with the Soviets in the aerospace industry. We also see uh, in that same year the creation of NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Um, we will uh, conclude because we're almost at our 15 minute limit and take a short break. We'll pick up with um, uh, the summit between Khrushchev and Eisenhower in the United States in a little while. <laughs>